And now to Counter Spy. Fog on the waterfront. It's just the right kind of a night for it, huh, Carl? Uh, look, uh, at your right. I'll wait for you in the car. You you handle Steve Morris alone. There's nobody else here in the wharf. Nothing to him, pal. Counsel Lusky said you're in on this with me and you stay in. Hey, he's coming out in the dark now. Got the bottle? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hello, Edgar. I got your message to meet you. What's up? Don't move, Steve. What? What's the idea of the gun? Steve Kantzelowski don't like competition. Competition? Especially from one of his own passes. I don't know what you're talking about, that's your... A count found out about you setting up shop for yourself on 12th Street to print phony travelers' checks. Go get it. I can't explain. I swear that's to you, why I... Carl's got that bottle of engraving acid in his hand. Etcher. The count's orders is to get rid of you the best way. Etcher, don't. An acid that. is the best way I know how. No, no, okay, go ahead. Give it to him. All counter spy field officers stand by. This is headquarters, Washington. A special message from Mr. David Harding. This is David Harding. One of the cleverest counterfeiting rings in criminal history is now operating in high gear. This gang specializes in passing fake traveler's checks and has to date cashed over a half a million dollars worth in 37 states. All counter-spy field officers will immediately contact local police authorities and set up Cooperation Plan R-3. Reports will be radioed daily to this headquarters. Hello? Hilda? This is Carl. Uh, okay to talk? Yes, yes, Carl. Uh, what about Counsel Esky? He's down in the basement of the house with Etcher. They're in the print shop. Carl, I've been waiting for your call for hours. I was afraid you'd run out on me. Well, me run out on you, Hilda? Listen, you and I are going to cash in on those printing plates together, just just like I promised. You have the uh, plates with you, Carl? I, I got them where they're nice and safe. How'd the Count take it when he found the plates were gone? Oh. <laughs> Thought he could get away with throwing me crumbs. I showed him, didn't I, baby? Uh, Carl, when when do I meet you and where? Uh, I'm up in White Plains, Hilda. Remember that spot outside town where we parked on our first date? Uh huh. I'll be waiting for you there. I'll start right away, Carl. From here on, honey, it's, it's just you and me, and a nice fat million bucks thanks to the Count's plates. See ya. Hmm. Well, Hilda. It's all arranged, Count Zaleski. He's waiting for me up at White Plains. And the plates? He says he has them in a safe place. Hilda performed excellently. Don't you think, Etcher? Sure. He's a regular Catherine Hepburn. <laughs> Carl, I feel like such a... Well, Carl isn't a bad sort. He... What's the idea of slapping me? To remind you, my dear Hilda, just what a bad sort Carl is. Low, despicable thief. Slimy double-crosser. Makes one lose faith in human nature. Three months of my best engraving work went into those plates for the new traveler's checks. Real masterpiece. And even more important than Etcher's professional pride is the tremendous financial setback. My passes throughout the country are awaiting the shipment of new checks. In the meantime, my press in the basement stands idle. Million-dollar business. Elder stands stand still. And you have the temerity to say Carl is not a bad sort. Really, Hilda, I'm ashamed of you. Edger, bring the car around. You'll go keep Hilda's date with Carl. Carl, any untoward move and I'll fire this automatic without hesitation. Yeah. Now, honest, Count Zaleski, you, you, you got it all wrong. Etcher and I were right beside Hilda when you spoke to her on the phone. Oh, she's a liar. She probably took the plates herself. You can't trust a dame like Hilda and the police. Yeah, 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 Carl. All the Count wants to hear out of you is a place where you had the plates hidden. Count, I, I, I wouldn't try to pull a fast one on you. Side road, Count. 
Carl, I'm going to let Etcher have a session with you. But I told you... Perhaps we called a session with Steve Morris last month. I brought an extra large bottle of engraving acid with me this time, Carl. Etcher, I'm sure Carl vividly recalls there was hardly enough left of Steve Morris to make a decent burial. Count, Count, if, if I tell you where the plates are, will you give me a break? Where are they? Oh, promise me, Count, you, you won't let Etcher do that to me. I promise I won't permit Etcher to touch you. Where are the plates? Yeah. In a locker in Grand Central Station. The key to the locker? R- right here in my coat pocket. Never mind. I'll reach in and get it. I have it, Etcher. No. Now everything's okay. Now you can get the plates back. You let me go? Of course, Carl. Open the door. What? You heard the car. Open the door to the car. You're going to jump out, Carl. Oh, but Carl, you... You promised you'd give me a break. This is it. We're only doing 40 miles an hour. Now, John. Now, John, please. No, please. Get out. <laughs> Carl, what if the jump didn't finish him off? Pull up and turn back, that's it. Well, if he survives and someone picks him up, he'll talk, Count. You should let me give him the acid treatment. We're doing this the way I planned it. Okay, Count. You're the bo- Hey, look up ahead, Carl. Yeah. Trying to crawl off the road. Took a smart fall. Hey, he sees us coming. Step on it. More speed. He's crawling fast, eh? More speed. More. Now answer it. Get him. Hello, Hilda. Yes. Quick, let me talk to the Count. Yes, just a minute. Count Zaleski, it's Etcher. What's the matter with you, Etcher? I told you to come right back here to the house after you picked up the plates at Grand Central. Carl pulled a fast one on us. The plates aren't there. Carl's locker was empty. Harding, Washington, calling Peters at Baltimore Field Office. Peters, Baltimore Field Office. Go ahead, Chief. I'm leaving my office now to get the 5 o'clock train for New York. You board the train at Baltimore and meet me, car 4, compartment C. What's up, Mr. Harding? We have a surprise break in the traveler check fraud, Peters. I'll fill you in on the details on the way to New York. Counterfeit engraving plates are now in our New York field office. How do we get them, Dave? The night before last, a man named Carl Walton was found dead on a dirt road north of White Plains, New York. Apparently, the victim of a hit-and-run accident. Apparently? Well, our agents went over the scene of the accident. They found evidence that Walton had tried to crawl off the road before the car hit him. Why our interest in Walton, Dave? Two previous convictions as a passer of counterfeit money. So Braden from the New York office went to the rooming house where this Walton had lived. The landlady turned a package over to Braden that Walton had left with her for safekeeping. And the package contained the traveler check plates. Right, Peter. The landlady was also helpful in another way. There's a coin phone in the rooming house. And she recalled that Walton spoke on the phone many times to someone he called Count Zaleski. Count Zaleski? Our old friend, the international swindler. And according to our periodic surveillance reports, he arrived back here in the States from Argentina six months ago. He rented a brownstone house on East 86th Street in New York City. An operation like the phony Traveler's Check Syndicate would be right up his alley, Dave. Looks like Zaleski's our boy, all right. Well, we could pick him up for questioning, but when we take him in, I want to make sure that we have all the evidence we need. Oh, uh, by the way, Peters, hmm? remember my friend Mickey Alvin? Well, the Colby City bootblack who sends his savings to the counter spy fund? Right. You said you hope to meet him sometime. Well, here's his latest letter. Oh, let's see. Dear Mr. David Harding, I'm very glad you put my money in the fund. It makes me feel like I am part of your wonderful bunch of fellows. Even if it's only $2.62 worth it. Quite a boy, huh? Last week, I had a very good week, Mr. Harding. Because there was a big convention in Colby City, and I picked up a lot extra in tips. I figured that if I take a bus and back, I could take a trip to Washington pretty soon. 
Now, I know this is asking pretty much, but could I at least walk through the counter-spy main building? <laughs> I wouldn't bother anybody. I'd just like to walk through. And if I knew I could do that, I would work extra hard and save every cent. I hope this is not asking too much, Mr. Harding. Sincerely, Mickey Alvin. Well, I wrote him, Peters, that he can not only walk through the building, but he can come and have lunch or dinner with us, whichever he likes. Well, oughtn't you to send him the money, Dave? Well, the way I figure that boy, he likes to make his own way. Let him earn the trip, and then I'll give him the money when he starts back for Colby City. Good hunch, Dave. Uh, what's your plan now about Count Zaleski? Oh, uh, yes, I didn't tell you, did I? Uh-oh. Here I go again. That's right. Only this time, when you go undercover, Peters, it's going to be much more risky than usual. Elda, I told you to stay away from that window. Uh, but, Count Zaleski, I just wanted to see if that man was still watching this house from across the street. Of course he is. He may be from the police. Well, let's soon find out. That's a... Yeah, Tom Zaleski. Come on upstairs. Well, Colonel, you told me to stay down here in the basement. Keep working on the new flights. I got a more important job for you at the moment. And, uh... That's a... Bring your gun with you. Come on, get in there. Okay, okay. You don't have to shove there he is, Count Zaleski. Why were you standing across the street watching this house? Oh, me? You answer a question with an answer, not a question. You wouldn't be so free with that mid of yours if you didn't have a rod on the other one. Count Zaleski, he doesn't sound as if he's from the police. Keep out of this, Hilda. Well, are you prepared to answer my question now? We're standing over there waiting for an invitation to come in. Who are you? You mean in New York? Ed, sir. All right, all right. Don't take me long to catch on. My name's Vince Powell. I used to be tied up at the Tyler crowd in Mason City. I got out of the jug there a couple of months ago and I come east to look up an old friend of mine. What friend, Powell? Carl Walton. Too bad about what happened to Carl, eh, Count Zaleski? I don't know any Carl Walton. Now look, Count... If you and me are going to do any business, let's talk in the up and up, hmm? Carl was working for you before he had that accident. This guy's too wild. Shut up, that's it. Carl, you said something about our doing business. Carl left something for me to hold for him. The plates. You can't. Your boy here is a real genius, ain't he? About that business, Carl. Well, print and counterfeit ain't in my line. So I figured I'd put those plates on the market. I also figured that I ought to give you first chance to buy them. Where are the plates now? <laughs> uh, you know something, Count? I think I got a temporary loss of memory. <laughs> and you know something, Paul? I admire you. Sure. I'm a grand guy. The courage for you to come here and make your offer. Oh, I don't know. I figured as long as I had those plates on tap, you'd make sure that I wouldn't have any, uh, sudden accidents. Now that we understand each other, Count Zaleski, what do you say we talk business? Peters to Harding. Peters to Harding. Harding, go ahead, Peters. I just got back to my room, Dave. Zaleski's stooge etcher tailed me here. He's outside in the hall now. Sure he can't hear you, Peters? I set up the two-way radio in the closet. How'd you make out the Zaleski? He did all right, Dave. I set up a deal to set him back the plates one at a time, the way you lined it out. All right, Peters. Only be careful. Dave, there might be a shortcut to some of the evidence through Zaleski's secretary, Hilda Krakow. Yes, she was giving me the eye all the time I was there. Maybe I can make Hilda Krakow really go for Vince Powell. Vince! 
didn't Carl ask me to go out with him tonight, Count Celeste? Of course, you accepted him. Look, Todd, I'm not telling you how to run your business, but I don't trust Paul. How do we know who he is? That's what I intend to find out, Edger. Who he really is. If he actually was a member of the Tyler crowd and did serve time in Mason City, as he says, then a fingerprint check will prove it. I can get a routine check through a politician friend of mine in Mason City. Police won't know anything about it. Oh, I get you, Card. You're going to use Hilda to get a set of Paul's prints, huh? Uh -huh. Hilda. Hmm? Use the compact trick. Make sure it's open when you drop it so the powder spills out. Mm-hmm. <laughs> For his own sake, Vince Powell had better be everything he says he is. Well, good night, Vince. Good night, Hilda. Aren't you going to ask me in for a nightcap? Count Zaleski doesn't approve of my entertaining friends in his home. But I had a wonderful evening, Vince. Thanks. I know a better way than that of saying thanks. Hmm? Come here. See what I mean? Yes, I do. My compact had slipped right out of my hand. It shows what a kiss can do sometimes. The powder spilled all over. No use crying over spilled powder. Uh, Vince, aren't you going to pick up my compact? Well? Uh, well sure, I'll clean it off with my handkerchief. Uh, no, no. Never mind, Vince. I'll, I'll clean it when I get inside. Okay. Here you are. Thanks. Mm. The mirror broke. That's supposed to mean bad luck. I hope not, Vince. I hope dropping this compact meant only good luck for both of us. Now, back to Counter Spy. Crouched in the closet of his room, Harry Peters is working over a small two way radio. Peters to Harding. Peters to Harding. Come in, Dave. Peters to Harding. Harding. Go ahead, Peters. Dave, I thought I'd never get you on this two-way. I had some trouble with the condenser. Been fooling around with it for almost an hour. How did you do with Zaleski's secretary tonight? Hilda pulled a fast one on me, Dave. Got my fingerprints by using the old dropped compact gag. I couldn't avoid it. Then Zaleski's not as sold on Vince Powell as we thought he was. Well, I figure he'll probably have somebody in Mason City check on my prints. You sit tight, Peters. I'll contact Washington and have a set of your friends rushed out to the Mason City Police. We'll make it easy for Zaleski. Okay, Dave. Here's hoping we beat Zaleski to the punch. Now, Zaleski... Here's a sample of the first round of traveler's checks for the new front place. Mm, excellent counterfeiting, aren't you? Don't want that press stopped until the run is completed. Then you'll set it up for the run on back plate. Too bad we haven't got that back plate right now, Carl. We'll have it by tomorrow night when Vince Powell makes his second uh, and uh, final delivery. Signal. Someone's coming down the stairs to the basement. Wait, I'll lock out through the transparent mirror. Hilda, unbolt the door, Agent. Right. Come on, Hilda. Count Zaleski, the call just came in from Mason City. And? The fingerprints checked. Vince Powell's everything he says he is. Looks to me, Count, like our girlfriend Hilda's fallen again. Why, don't be silly. Would be a shame, Hilda, if you fall in love with Powell. It would be such a short-lived romance. What? <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> I'm afraid, Hilda, that Vince Powell will soon join his friend, Carl Walton. But Vince hasn't double-crossed you. Hilda. Did you think I was really going to pay him for those plates? My own plates? Well, the man's practically a blackmailer. And I detest blackmailers. Vince 
Yes, I'm so glad I found you in your room. What's the matter, Hilda? I can only stay a minute. Look, don't deliver that back plate to the Count tomorrow night. But I've got a deal. He's going to kill you. What? Just as soon as you turn that black back plate over to him, he's going to have Etcher kill you. Then I don't want that to happen to you. You don't? You don't believe me. Should I? Since I only want to help you. Why? Because you're nice and... And I like you very much. When you kissed me the other night, I... You know something? I'm beginning to believe you. Thanks for the tip, Hilda. Yeah. Well, I... Got to get back now. Maybe I'll hear from you sometime, Vince? Sure, Hilda. You'll hear from me. Bye, Vince. Yeah, goodbye. That's you. You move, Paul, or gun goes off. Vince, I, I didn't know he followed me here. Believe me. It's okay, Hilda. Thanks for the try, anyway. Hilda, I told a counter jam like you couldn't be trusted. I heard the talk you two had in here. Come on, both of you. Count Zalewski's waiting for you downstairs in the car. It's kind of cold out, actually. Do you mind if I get my coat out of the car? Don't try any tricks. Don't worry. I know better. Come on, come on. Make a savvy. Right with you, Etcher. Just looking for my best coat. After all, I want to look stylish when I go riding with Count Zaleski. I said snap it up. Here it is. Nice looking coat, huh, Etcher? Get it on fast, pal. A count don't like to be kept waiting. <laughs> There's a turn off the main highway up ahead. Take it. With pleasure, Count Zaleski. Hilda Butt here with me. has got the shakes, Count. Hilda recalls what happened to Carl Walton. Don't you, Hilda? Count Zaleski, please don't do that to me. You don't have to worry about being thrown from the car, Hilda. I've got something special planned for you when we get through with Powell. You know, Count, I thought you were a smart operator. Why should you doubt it now, Powell? Because getting rid of me isn't going to get you what you want. Here's a tie off, Count. Uh-huh. Uh, you were saying, Paul? Oh, yes, about uh, my lack of judgment and disposing of you now. You need that back plate to finish printing the traveler's checks. You'll never get it this way. I realize that. But I'm forced to attend to first things first. It'll take extra a long time to make a new plate. You can save all that time. Sorry, Paul. No more deals. Be good enough to open that door. Look, Count, don't be a sucker. Open the door, Paul, unless you prefer that I fire this gun at you. Count! Police car. I can see the headlights in the rear view mirror. Step on it, Dancer. Slow down to a stop. Let them come. Are you crazy? Come to a stop, I said. All they can do is give us a ticket for speeding. Brother, are you in for a surprise? Paul, oh, Hilda, if I love you so much as opens your mouth, I shoot. Remember you two, not a word. Braden, you and Carpenter come to the other side of the car, all right? All right, everybody out. What's the meaning of this? You're under arrest by the United States government. Keep him covered, Braden. Got him, Mr. Harding. Harding? See what I meant, Count Zaleski? I had a couple of bad minutes back there, Mr. Harding, before I heard the patrol car siren. Sorry we took so long, Peter. We wanted to avoid shooting on the main highway. Uh, what is this? This Zaleski is my assistant, counter-spy agent Harry Peters. And it's also the wind-up for you and your gang, Zaleski. By the way, Etcher, thanks for giving me the chance to get my coat out of that closet. When I went in there, I switched on a radio transmitter, and my conversation with you tipped off Mr. Harding as to what was going on. Chief, I want to talk to you about Hilda Krakow about putting in a clemency plea for her when they come to trial. Braden, you and Carpenter take care of this bunch. Will do, Mr. Harding. Come on, Peters. We'll talk about that clemency plea on the way back to town. Tuesday and Thursday, same time, same station to Counter Spy. Listen on Thursday for the exciting case of the Rats of Relief. An empty truck and a dead man lay at the bottom of the river as Rats of Relief gnawed at the goodwill between America and Europe. To smash the racket, a Counter Spy took his life in his hands to save another life. 
Be tuned in on Thursday to Case of the Rats of Relief on Counter Spy. Tonight's Counter Spy program originated in New York and was directed by Leonard L. Bass. Dramatized by Edward Adamson and featured Don McLaughlin and Mandel Kramer with music by Jesse Crawford. Counter Spy is a Phillips H. Lord production for Pepsi Cola. Enjoy some delicious Pepsi tonight. <laughs> 